Sports event is a moment where people come together, they connect into something they believe in, and they participate. They actively participate. They, you know, it's not just uh, watching, it's actually involving it, feeling it, chanting, you know, doing loads of things within it. And an immersive event is very much that. In an immersive event, you want the audience to participate in the event, to feel part of it. So I was like, well, this is perfect. It makes total sense to do it. We've done a lot of immersive stuff before, and this, I guess, the interesting thing about this is it's aiming for a slightly different audience, I guess. We're, the idea of doing an immersive sports show where the draw is that you can watch something that you can't possibly have seen happen in real time is quite interesting. And it brings up a couple of challenges that a regular immersive show might not have. I was quite excited when I first heard about this, actually, just because I'd never done immersive theatre before. But the kind of mix of being a stage musician, a stage artist, but also, or at least an artist who plays music primarily on stage, but someone who has composed for theatre before. It felt like a meeting of both of those worlds a bit more. So to, to me, uh, the, the fight, Ali and Foreman, are the catalyst, really. They are the uh, gate to enter uh, a moment in history that has political connotation, but has lots of strong cultural connotation. And back then, it shone a light to a country that people weren't aware of around the world. And the music festival also came with it. So what I'm doing, when I'm doing, when we're creating the show, is trying to do the same thing. It's like, we know that we know the fight is our gate, right? It's what's gonna bring the audience and, and make people go, oh, this is interesting. Um, I, I think in the show, music will play a few roles. It will serve as a kind of a, an invisible character, kind of leading you and trying to, and also trying to help us stay rooted in the time travel element, you know, being in 74. But also we're gonna try to give a kind of a, a brief recreation of the festival. Some of the kind of luminary performers, Celia Cruz, James Brown, Franco Luambo, um, and Miriam McCabe, they were like, you know, quite well known figures at the time who performed there. And, and we're going to try to recreate a very kind of um, shortened, shunted version of the festival, like quick hits. Um, and, and, and in that sense, it's, it serves as a reminder. Um, so so as, a, as, a, as a hidden character, but also as a reminder of what actually happened at the time, um, musically, and, and how much that music served to, to remind the world of, I guess, black excellence in general, of the time. Everything is immersive nowadays, you know, they make um, an exhibition and it's immersive, or they make a song and it's immersive. What is immersive? Um, I think th in terms of theatre and in terms of the UK, I've seen there's different styles. There's a style of shows that you go in, in a right light, where you just go from one place to another. There's the shows like you come in but you don't get to interact with the audience. So you don't you have an agency in terms of being able to move around the space, but you don't have an agency in terms of reacting and talking to people and to the characters. The shows that I am used to making are those where you give the audience where the audience become the hero part of the story. So every every kind of medium has someone we follow, right? There's always the main character and we follow them. In immersive the way I like it is the heroes of the story are the audience. It's about, at the end of the night, what story you went through. And what we do is we place flags, we place elements in the space, just like when you travel to a new country. And when you step in, you are able to connect with three, four different people, and that's your story. That's the story that by the end of the night you'll be able to tell. So what I'm looking to do is exactly that, create those moments, enough of them, so that every audience member can have a different journey, but it's also obviously within the context of the main story. So we have, we have a beginning bit that opens up and that everybody gets to experience. We have a part where everyone gets them to free flow and interact, interact and connect with people and just create their own path. And then a moment where we all come together back again to kind of like be in a focus point where we get to see the staging of the fight and, 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 and learn new things from it. So to me, immersive is that. Like, I'm, I'm passionate about it because I feel like very close to reality. I think it's the closer to actually experiencing something because it's not so much about watching it and hearing it. It's about feeling it. It's about walking around the space. It's about being active, it's about dancing, it's about sweating. So at the end of the night, you have gone through a life experience, literally. You move, you breath, you dance, you jump, you walk around, you saw people, you interacted with people, you went out of your comfort zone. 
because the, the, the idea is that the show allows people to do that without forcing it, but just so that they feel like, no, I want to, I want, I want to dance, I want to jump, I want to, I want to sport, I want to chant, you know that, so that they have that memory in the bodies, not so much in the minds. Like they've lived it, so they can go, no, I live this, I enjoyed it, it's in my body, I know what it feels like to be chanting Ali Bomaye, to be dancing to a Miriam Makiba song. I know what it feels like, surrounded by other people who have the same feeling, which is just like sports. So one of the things we need to do in the wider show is to sort of prime the audience for the environment in which this is taking place, like Zaire in 1974, um, which means going through an awful lot of, for us, archive footage, trying to replicate what would be on televisions in the hotel at that time. What would you be seeing as you come out of the airport? What sort of imagery? And also maybe giving them a sense as they walk in of, of the time they're going back to. Which, yeah, which for us means going through an awful lot of archive footage at the time, going through an awful lot of related imagery, trying to build up some sense of the political landscape that they're about to walk into. It's about Congo, it's about the Congolese people, it's about people in Kinshasa, it's about them, right? Really, it's about how they live and how we can for, uh, connect with the community here in the UK, actors who are Congolese, and give them the space, facilitate the space so that they can tell their own stories and tell a side of Congo that people don't know about. Because I think that's something we found through uh, our focus groups and through our auditions is that um, the Congolese people who got involved in the project were very, very proud of the opportunity to, to talk about something that is not normally spoken about. And then we speak about, and it happens to me because I'm from Colombia as well, but people hear one side of the story. Oh yeah, Colombia is a war place, our oh, Congo is a war place, and that's what generally goes in the news. But when you have the opportunity to then go, yeah, that's true, but there is also this or many elements that becomes yeah, a great, great opportunity to tell a different story. And I think that is where you know, my heart goes, is like, let's use the catalyst, a story of this great hero that we all love, this great moment in history, and start channeling it so that then the audience come and discover something that they wouldn't have done otherwise. Coming up, growing up, Zaya 74 was something that was kind of, you know, noted in our, in our house. My, my dad was a, a huge music fan, especially of a lot of the kind of the, the 70s funk, kind of African funk movement, which includes a lot of Afrobeat, like the Fela Kuti kind of school, includes some of that. But also a lot of that kind of, um, you know, I mean, Zaire, music from Zaire was incredibly influential as well in West Africa in the 70s, like hugely influential. So for me, I kind of knew a bit about it growing up because my dad was always listening to that music in the house. Um, but it was interesting coming to then research it and realizing how, how actually, I think this is really weird, but it was how advanced the musicians were in, 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 in Africa, in that decade especially. I think that was for me the golden era of, of African kind of music in terms of blending what came from outside and what was already inside Africa. Um, and the research just kind of helped me appreciate what an incredible tree I was a branch of, you know, as far as music was concerned. I think culturally as well, the fact that it's in Zaire, Congo, I think that is such an important fundamental thing to how do you bring out the culture of Africa in this story that, you know, was important to the whole rumble in the jungle. So I think that's a really key uh, component. And also just having that, I think, festival vibe to the whole event. So it's not lost that actually it was a world event. It was a festival, it was a show. So not losing that just to make sure that the box is not just the most important thing, which it is, but those other aspects that made it such a big global event at the time. Because I think, if I'm being honest, watching just boxing for five, six rounds, unless you're a boxing fan, you've got to be intrigued. But I think if you're an art goer, you want to see something more. So I think the movement is about over-exaggerating you know, what you see and how artistically you can make it pleasing to the eye and people still, and boxing fans can still be connected in a certain aspect. So I think it's, that's what movement hopefully tries to find the balance. 
The story of George for me, for instance, is something that I'm like interested to, to dig a little bit more. Um, obviously back then, it was the big fight for Muhammad Ali meant a lot. He was, you know, he was regaining his throne. He, need, he wasn't just fighting a person, he was fighting a system, he was fighting for bigger things. So it was important that he won. But George Foreman was 23, he was, a, he was a kid. He was a kid, he was doing his career, and, and to be in a country where everything and everyone is against him, I think that was very difficult. Like, I would think to myself, it's 23, how do you deal with that emotionally? And the process that he went straight after, a few years of depression, but then how he rediscovered and grew up as a, as a better human, as a better man, or, or, as an evolved person, you know, without judging whether it's good or not, but as he evolved from it, I think that to me is very interesting. So, again, that's part of the story that I'm like, this is good, how can we tell that? One of it, one thing is veracity, I guess. We've got to recreate a fight that is real. This isn't a fictional element from a movie or a piece of a plot that we've written. This is something that did actually happen. And we've got to present it in a way that feels authentic, even though we definitely can't actually have a fight on stage. So that's an interesting challenge, right? <laughs> Because of the media circus that sort of surrounded that fight, having that media presence is, is really, really important. Just in the sense of an, creating an immersive world that people walk into where they feel like they're in that massive event. But also, we've got a fight happening on a stage that we need to see very closely. So there's like a practical job to do there as well. We need to, we need to show what happened in 1974. We need to show what our cast are doing and we need to find a way of blending those in and doing it in such a way that the audience feel like they're in a 1974 broadcast. Well, I think, yeah, to me, Mohamed Ali is like a reference for life, you know? Uh, someone who, who was very dedicated to what he was doing, who, true, who believed in himself and believed in his cause. Um, what I find when, when I'm understanding and discovering more and more from him is uh, I feel inspired. I feel inspired to go, no, this is a, there's a way of doing these things. Like, life throws you different things, and, and as you grow, and then you know, the, whole, the whole fight he had to go uh, to, to stand for his right and for what he believed.